your Bibles, turn with me. I want to start with 2 Kings chapter 2, but I really want to get into the word in uh, 2 Kings 5. So go ahead and turn to 2 Kings 5, and I'll just catch you up as we go to 2 Kings 2. I want to talk to you tonight about kingdom loyalty. Kingdom loyalty. And I know that isn't a fancy title, but I'm not feeling too fancy uh, right now. I just want to give you the truth of what God's stirring on the inside of my heart. And I've got about 20 minutes to do it, but I may take 30 to do it. Uh, in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 8 through 14, now we're starting off with Elijah and Elisha. And, and I love, these are two of my favorite Old Testament uh, men of God is Elijah and Elisha. I love to, to, to preach about them. I love to, to, um, to daydream with them. Um, and, and, you know, what do you mean by daydream with them? Well, what, what I mean by that is sometimes this, you know, I, I don't know how you all pray, but this is one of the ways that I pray. Sometimes I'll just get in a chair and I'll just lean back and I'll close my eyes and I'll just begin to, to just allow myself to converse with God, and as he begins to open scripture up to me, it's almost like I'm right there and I'm interacting. And I don't know if that happens with you or not, and if it doesn't, then don't think I'm strange. That's just the way that God communicates with me. But uh, sometimes I just daydream with God, and I just allow God to speak to me. I allow him to, uh, you know, uh, you, whether you think you're in control or not, I hate to break the news to you, you're not. You're a control freak. I know it and everybody else knows it, but you're really not in control. So sometimes it's just good as you just spend time with God and you begin to pray and you just begin to allow God to speak to you and allow him to take you and carry you into places where he wants you to be. And when that happens, he begins to reveal mysteries of the kingdom to you. So in this passage of scripture, Elijah and Elisha, they're walking in verse 8. Now Elijah took the mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, and it divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Wouldn't you have loved to have been there that day when Elijah struck the Jordan River, and, his, and, and I'd been there going, check that out. I'd have been looking at everything, saying, how'd that happen? It's God. Don't try to figure it out. It's just God. So they walk across on dry ground. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may, I do, what may I do for you before I am taken from you? Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be unto you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened as they continued and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He also took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Now I want to try to set this up. Elijah, Elisha was a faithful servant to Elijah. He was loyal to Elijah. He was inseparable. Many times, I think it was three different times before this passage of scripture, people tried to separate Elisha from Elijah. Because he said, your man of God's getting ready to be taken from you. In fact, Elijah even told him, won't you stay? Elisha said, no, I'm going with you. Amen. In other words, he was saying, I'm going to walk the very last step that I can with you. I'm, I'm saying something to you tonight. He was so loyal to Elijah. He said, I don't care what I go through. I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to walk as long and as far as I can with you. That's loyalty. So now his man of God has taken the mantle, falls to the ground. And you think about it. Elisha is now standing there and he sees the mantle. What's he do? He has a decision to make now. He either watches it and leaves it or he picks it up. But there is weight in picking it up. He knows the weight because if you remember the text that when he first met Elijah, Elijah threw the mantle on him and he experienced something he had never experienced before. There is a weightiness in carrying a mantle in the kingdom of God. I don't care what kind of mantle it is, if it's of the kingdom, there's a weightiness about it because there's an importance in every mantle of the kingdom. 
So he looks at the mantle and he has a decision. Am I going to pick it up or am I going to leave it there? I don't know if I have what it takes to carry it. But he picks it up. And if he were you or me, he would have studied it and looked at it. And then he rolls it up. And it says he smote the water. And he speaks these words. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? In other words, what he was saying. I saw you move yesterday. I saw you move just a little while ago right here. But that was then, this is now. I didn't need you then, I need you now. I need a move of God in my life right now, right here today. And he smoked the water and he washed it apart. There are many of you, my God. There are many of you that need God to move in your life. I desire God to move in this house. And we've all experienced moves of God of yesterday and a few moments ago or a few hours ago. But you need God now. You desperately need God now. And you need to roll up the mantle that you just picked up off the ground. And you need to smoke that thing and watch it roll back. And you'll walk across again on dry ground. Go ahead and give God praise this evening. But why did he experience that kind of authority? Because he had been loyal to that kind of authority. See, when you are loyal to that type of authority, it falls on you when you carry it. Some of you just need to get your wit back about you. You just need to pull up your, you just need to pull your boot strings up or belt straps up, if you will, in, in the kingdom of God and become who God's called you to be and stop sucking your thumb and stop crying about what you don't have and why things look the way. They will continue to look that way or worse until you realize who you are in the kingdom of God and step into it. I'm not trying to be harsh, but there's, there, there is just an authority on me tonight that I'm just going to preach to you and let it fall where it falls. But it's kingdom loyalty. Now, I said all that to set this scripture up about Gehazi. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 19, Naaman, uh, a, a very uh, high up in, 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 in government, comes and he wants to be healed uh, by the prophet Elisha. And, 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 and we find out he got upset at first because he told him to go wash in the Jordan River. And he said, I could have washed back at Damascus and cleaner rivers than this. And, and then his servant kind of got a hold of him. Isn't it amazing that many times we need people around us to speak little bits of truth into us when, we won't live, when, when we're trying to rationalize things ourselves? I won't get to this in a minute, but Naaman's having a conversation with himself. And one of his servants said, if he told you to do something great, wouldn't you have done it? And won't you just go ahead down that old dirty river and just dip seven times like he told you to? Where are you going to be out? Get a little bit of mud on you? I don't know. When we were there in the Jordan, little fish did like the nibble on your legs. I, I kind of liked it. It was just almost like a, a little leg massage going on. But he goes down in the Jordan, he dips seven times, and he comes up, and his skin's as brand new, as smooth as a baby skin, it said. So we find out up until uh, 2 Kings 5, 1 through 19, everybody's happy, happy, happy. Elijah's happy, or Elisha's happy, Naaman's happy, Naaman's servants just thrilled. Everybody's happy except Gehazi. Why is Gehazi so bent out of shape? Instead of rejoicing in God's goodness, he's complaining about Elisha's unselfishness. Unselfishness now. He wanted his man of God to be selfish because Naaman had offered him uh, silver and gold and clothes and Elisha said, no, I don't want any of it. Just take it. And that got under the skin of Gehazi. Gehazi is now the servant to Elisha the same as Elisha was a servant to Elijah. You understand? You with me now? Gehazi had a wonderful future ahead of him had he just stayed loyal to the man of God. Now, I want to set this up. Elisha was the assistant, or I'm sorry, uh, Gehazi was the assistant to Elisha. 
He was his servant. He was his companion. He was his assistant. He saw the miracles at the hands of Elijah. He experienced great things. He sat under the teaching of a great man of God. I'm sure he heard all the stories of Elijah. I, 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 I can't probably begin to imagine how many times Elijah recounted the double portion day. Now, you think about that. Now, we have the word of God, but think about getting it right from the horse's mouth. Man, you should have seen it that day. He said, man of God asked me, what is it that you want from me? He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. He said, there was just a boldness come upon me. I wish you could have been there, Gehazi. It was like, think about it. You should have seen it when a man of God rolled up the man on split the Jordan River. He said, I've walked across there with such great authority. He said, yeah, my man of God's bad. He just has the spirit of God. He has the authority of God all over him. He said, but it was different when I had to roll it up. He was being real with him. Can I be real with you tonight? Thank you. I'm going to anyhow because that's all I know how to be. Real and transparent. That's all I know. But he was, he was living out life through the eyes of Elisha. He heard all these great things. But also he knew what he was being groomed for. He knew, listen, Gehazi knew he was being groomed just like Elisha was being groomed. So he had a great future ahead of him, but there was an issue. Gehazi had a heart issue. Gehazi was filled with greed. He lost his wow. He lost his wow for God. He lost his wow for the kingdom of God and the miracles of God. What do you mean by that, pastor? He had gotten so common with God moving, it didn't mean anything to him anymore. He got so common with, with having a, a, such a high authority of a prophet with him that he overlooked it and thought it was just common everyday stuff. And if we're not careful, we'll fall right in the same trap. That we'll get so common with everything going on, we'll take everything for granted, we'll lose the wow. For God. We'll lose the wow for the kingdom of God, the fire of God. We'll lose the wow for revival. We'll lose the wow for the Holy Ghost moving. Don't lose your wow with God and don't lose your wow with your spouse and don't lose your wow for your church. I'm serious. Don't lose the wow fact. Don't look at things too long to where your eyes get off of God and onto the thing. To where you start looking at a problem and your faith deplenishes. And don't lose the wow factor for your spouse. You better amen. I'll come right, get them right in your face. I don't care. You need to fall in love with your spouse all over again. You, you men need to look at your wife, and when she, when she put, does her best to look good, you need to look at her and say, wow. Oh, you'll get paid back. <laughs> somebody asked me, now, now you, can't, you can't tell my granddaughter this, but somebody asked me what was my favorite part of the trip. See, there's always some people around put you right on the spot. What was your favorite part of the trip? I said, you know what the favorite part of my trip was? was Saturday afternoon whew, when I walked across that stage and I turned around and saw my wife's face. Yeah. Because it wasn't just me walking across that stage. She was walking right there with me, brother, because it wasn't me getting anything. It was we getting it because we haven't walked, because I haven't walked anywhere by myself that she hasn't walked with me. And I don't care to take one step without her. I still got the wow for that woman of God right there. I'm serious. I, can I keep going, Pastor Terry, or should I? Bless God, I, I, I trust, and I hope you can handle this. If not, grow up. But every day I look at my wife and I tell her how hot she is. She is smoking hot. Woo! It was cool when I got in here, but it's getting hot now. I don't know if I'm nervous or... I'm not nervous. I'm telling you, you need to have the wow factor for your spouse. And you women need to let your man know just how thankful you are for them. See, I preach to the men long enough, now I'm going to hit you. 
You need to take them by the hand and just say, thank you for being you. And if you have a praying man, if he prays at all, you ought to snuggle up next to him and say, I want to thank you for being the high priest of our home. I want to thank you for praying and don't move till you hear God speak. And if you have a man like that, you better thank God above that you have someone walking with you with that kind of a relationship with God. I'm getting stirred up here tonight. Don't lose that wow. Don't lose the wow for God. When was the last time you saw God move and went, wow? A little bit earlier today for me, but we'll get to that Sunday morning. Saturday night, I said, wow. When I heard Sunday morning, when I saw it, I just snorted right there. Did you hear that? That's cool. <clears throat> you have to have a doctor to do that. When that car was coming right at me, my granddaughter in the back, I said, wow. Thank God you got this. I didn't even get nervous. Evan was sitting over there. I thought he was going to climb a wall. (laughs) Don't tell him I said that. But I just sat there because I knew God had it under control. My God never ceases to amaze me. I was standing there this evening thinking about some of the circumstances that's going on in this room right now tonight. Some, some of the, the hellish acts that has been, been unleashed in your life. Some of the things that, some, some of the, uh, uh, some, some of the, uh, um, uh, uh, some of the devices that the enemy has released to destroy you. I've been thinking about that. And I've been thinking about how the enemy's trying to take some of you out and how he's trying to destroy your families. And, and I want you to, I want to speak something to you tonight. You just keep pleading the blood of Jesus over your family. You keep praying for your family. Put that protective hedge around your family. Sooner or later, the devil will have to retreat in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody celebrate God in this house tonight. He will have to relent. He's already a defeated foe. He just doesn't know it completely yet. He's already defeated. And there'll be a day. Listen to me. You you mark this down. uh, November, whatever the date is, 2017. You write it down. One day you will thank God for the situation that you're in tonight. You hear what I'm telling you. There'll be a day when God works, and I know you're in a season right now where you think it'll never end, it's never going to be over. But there'll be a day when you'll be able to look back on that and you'll thank God for that day because on the other side, what you can't see now, what you don't feel now, on the other side of this, you're going to experience the joy of God. You're going to experience the deliverance of God, the salvation of God, the healing virtue of God, the power of God. And you're going to say, wow, God, I thank you for allowing me to be in that situation that you brought me out of. it." I don't know where you all are. But don't get stuck there. Don't lose the why. I'm not even an eighth of the way through this. He had lost his wow. Don't lose your wow factor for God. Don't lose your wow factor for your spouse. And don't lose your wow factor for life. Don't lose your wow factor for life. Celebrate life. Enjoy life. Enjoy those crying fits that your kids and grandkids have. We were down, we were down, when we were down in Florida, uh, Andy and Haley called and they were down in the valley and wanted to know if they could just spend a night at the house one night while, uh, uh, while we were away. I don't know why they called. They could have just got in, never said anything to us about it. But we got back to the house, and I walked over to the back door. It goes out to the backyard, and I looked down, down on the glass, and there was food of smudge, smeared something all over that glass. And I'm thinking, wow. Did you hear what I just said? Wow. 
Why would I say wow? Because when I was a kid, growing up, I had things spoken over me. Even in high school, I remember a, a, a counselor speaking and saying, you'll never make anything of yourself. You'll never be anything. There's no reason for you to even go to college. You'll never make it through. You just, I'm serious. I'm, I'm serious with what he told me. He said, you'll never be able to make it. He said, you, he said, you just might as well find you a little old job and don't worry about anything because you're not going to amount to anything in life. And I had that spoke over me. And see, what I allow things like that to do to me, I allow that to burn fire on the inside of me and say, you just hold on. Pull yourself up a seat. And you watch what God does in my life. Because you see, it was never about me. It was, I know there was always God in the equation. That's why when I look back and I see those little smudged handprints, I say, wow, God, you've been good to me. You've allowed me to have a home with a back glass looking out a backyard where my granddaughter cannot come up eating some kind of creamy looking thing and just play games all over the window. <laughs> he surrounded me with good friends. He, he has allowed me to pastor a church that is more than a dream come true. You never thought you'd be more than a dream come true to anybody, but you are to me. Do you hear me tonight? Don't lose the wow for life. I don't care how old you are. This is not where I wanted to go in this message. Don't lose the wow factor in your life. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care what you're going through. Some of you is just mean and nasty. You need to get over that. You need to allow God to love you tonight. Get you beyond your, dis your disgruntledness. Some of you just need to you just need, I, I pray, Holy Spirit, just give them a dose of the ghost right now in Jesus' name. Every section, a dose of the ghost, God. A dose of the ghost. A dose of the ghost, God. Love them where they need to be loved. Heal them where they need to be healed. Let, just, just get on them, Holy Ghost. Lord, may we learn never to lose the wow factor of life. Well, I'll enjoy life as soon as this phase is over in your, get over that. Enjoy that. Learn to enjoy that. I know it's hard. But weeping may endure for the night. Oh, but joy comes. I pray the Holy Ghost release joy. Replace joy for depression right now. Mm. Kingdom loyalty. Gaze eyes. Did you hear, just hear that little laugh right there? Did you hear that laugh? There's nothing like a little child's laugh. Sam, you know. I know sometimes they drive you up the wall, but man, that laugh. There's nothing like that. Little sailor, sailor. I can just forget the message anyway. I'm not getting there. I'm going to preach that again. I'll save most of that. It's okay, Johnny. I'll save most of that. You know, we took sailor to Disney because if they're under three, they get in for free. There's nothing free there. Nothing. They'll get it out of you one way or another. Three dollars for a bottle of water. I remember that. You all remember the day when you said, I'll never pay a dime for a bottle of water. Anybody, does everybody remember that? That I'll never pay for water. I said that. I did. I paid three dollars for a bottle of water the other day. Three, three, three dollars. It hurt. I felt like Jay Arn. It hurt when I spent that money. It hurt. We got down there. Listen, we got down there. And Evan and Alyssa, Evan and Alyssa bought, uh, bought Sailor this, uh, this book, this uh, autograph book. She's three. You know, princesses are a big deal when you're three. Olaf the snowman's a big deal when you're free, you all this stuff, or when you're three. So Winnie the Pooh was her first character, and I'm just interested in the eggs they have on their breakfast bar. So I'm just eating that, and Winnie the Pooh, and she's all having Pooh sign and having Tigger and, and Eeyore and all this. Well, anyway, she went through all this, and then she finally gets to meet Olaf. 
I, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't get his name right half the time. Half the time I call him Zoloft. I, I, don't, <laughs> I, I, don't mean, I don't mean to. It's just I do it. So, so it's Olaf. So she gets to see Olaf, and, and she takes her book, and she hands it. She wants that book signed. And the attendant said, oh, honey, he doesn't sign books. A snowman doesn't know how to read or write. I went, but a bear does. <laughs> so anyhow, anyway. So anyway, she gets this look about her like, well, go ahead and hug him. So hugs him. You know what she said? She walked out. She said, he didn't even sign my book. <laughs> and she was upset. He gave her two stickers with his face and his name on it. He didn't sign my book. And she was ready to go. She was done with Olaf. But isn't that much like us? Oh, I'm going to hit this one. I tell you, you know, it, God's amazing. You go down these road and you have no idea where he's taking. Where are you taking me with this Olaf guy? You know, where, where, we're just like Sailor right there. We come with these high expectations. He's going to sign my book. He's going to give me what I want. He's going to answer the prayer the way I want. I'm going to get my healing just like this. My son and daughter are going to get saved. I can just get them to church. They're going to get saved the first time. They might get saved on the side of a street. They, may get, hmm, they might get saved in prison. My God didn't listen to me. He, my son's in jail. That other character he got set free he's just out there living like a freak but my son said have you ever thought that maybe he's in prison because you haven't stopped praying and there's somebody in that prison that can break down those walls and get that heart softened where he can reach your son or daughter but we have these high expectations and when God doesn't meet our expectations well, he didn't even sign my book and you get all upset it's the preacher's fault and the church's fault and you go find your new church and it's my husband's fault and you Go find a new husband. No, I hate to break the news to you. It isn't the preacher. It isn't the church. It isn't your husband. It isn't your kids. It's you. And until you learn to just say, wow, God, you are so good to me. He has already exceeded my expectations. He's already taken me further than a lot of people ever thought I'd go. He's already taken me further than I deserved. But aren't you glad it isn't about what you deserve? It's about his goodness and where his goodness is concerned. There's no limits to his goodness. So tonight, as you stand to your feet, might as well wrap it up. I encourage you not to lose your wow factor for God, for your spouse, or for life. If you've gotten a little cold, I want you to come to the altar tonight. I want you to ask God to light that fire again. Maybe you need to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Maybe you need to just come and just allow him to, to do a heart work right here tonight. Maybe you've served God for 20 years. But maybe something happens. Maybe he didn't meet those expectations. Maybe the battles made you a little battle weary. Maybe the trials has begun to take its toll on you. Maybe that pain in your body hasn't uh, maybe it hasn't stopped the way you've asked the Lord to. Well, why don't you come and ask him again tonight? Well, I don't want to be what it speaks of in the Bible to pray in vain, pray in vain, reputatious things. Let me tell you, you know what that's talking about? That's talking about your heart not believing what you're praying. When the Word of God says, ask, seek, and knock, how many times you ask until He answers? There's been times that we face things in our lives with our children. I don't just pray about it one time. I pray until God moves. I pray until I see heaven touch earth. 
and I keep praying and I keep praying. And sometimes I keep praying so long do I don't even have words to pray. But my spirit on the inside, it groans on the inside. And the Holy Spirit knows exactly what that groan is. Sometimes you will hurt so deep and so bad that you won't be able to speak. But in those moments, God will send someone to you to pray with you or your spirit will begin to pray. If you just need a dose of the Holy Ghost tonight, I want you to come. Or if you just want a dose of the Ghost. Or what's a dose of the Ghost? It's just a refreshment of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> if you just come and love on Him tonight. Come and pray tonight. Come and pray. Come and pray for our prayer warriors that's hurting. Joe Gunner and Bob Freeman and Red McComas. Come and pray for them. They've been prayer warriors for years and someone must stand in the gap. If you need a miracle in your life, come and pray tonight. Come and pray for your children. Come and pray for your spouse. Come and pray for the situation that you're dealing with. You just come and pray. Just fall in love with Him all over again. Come and pray for revival. Come and pray for a move of the Holy Ghost. My God is awesome. Come and pray for the ones standing or sitting beside of you tonight. Come and pray as the Holy Spirit leads you. Forever My God is awesome. Awesome. Anybody in the congregation that would just come and just maybe lay hands on people around the altar tonight. Like for men to come and pray with men and women to come and pray with women. Please just come and pray for somebody. Somebody just needs encouragement, strength. My God is awesome. Yes, Lord. Awesome. Yes, Jesus. He's healed, Lord. Drive back darkness. Father, may doubt be driven back tonight. May your marvelous light come, God. May your light come. people are around the altar this evening, I do want to share the plea of my heart tonight. The plea of my heart is that somebody needs to pick up a prayer mantle tonight. As I mentioned a little while ago, we have three of our generals of the faith in this house, Red McComas and Joe Gunner and Bob Freeman that are fighting for their lives right now. They're fighting for their lives. They're all prayer warriors. They're all generals of prayer in this house. And the issue is in the kingdom today, there's not very many prayer warriors picking up those mantles anymore. They're not picking them up. People stand in line for other mantles, mantles to, to pastor, be an apostle, to be this, to be that. But we must have prayer in the kingdom of God. 
And you can't wait for someone else to pick it up. You must be the one to pick it up. You don't have to be great in your eyes. All you need to do is just start talking to God. That's all prayer is, is just talking to God. And just learn to enjoy that conversation with the creator of the universe, the healer of humanity. Just learn to fall in love with talking to God. That's prayer. You need to pick up that mantle of prayer tonight. You need to commit, I'm going to pray, God. There's no greater joy. Hear me now. There is no greater joy than getting to communicate with Jesus Christ. Getting to talk to Him. And the thought of Him wanting to talk to us. You can't wait for someone else. The kingdom cannot and will not move without prayer. So I'm asking you tonight, to leave your seat, get around this altar, and just begin to pray. Right now. I'm going to ask you to leave your seat, get around this altar, and just begin to pray. And pray what's on your heart. Just begin to pray. Just begin to cry out to God. Begin to pray. Pray for your family. Pray for your marriage. Pray for the United States of America. Pray for revival. Pray for souls to be saved. Pray for your church to grow. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your staff. Just begin to pray. Just begin to pray. Ask God to heal. Ask God to save. Ask God to deliver. Be simple about it. Don't try to pray like someone else. Just pray the way you pray. Just talk to God. Just talk to Him. Just talk to Him. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you answer prayer, God. We thank you that you love us so much that you want to talk to us. That regardless of how dark it is, God, you are the light that dispels that darkness. You are the truth in every situation. You're our healer. You're our Savior, our Provider, our Deliverer. You're our hiding place, our Advocate, our Strong Tower, our Refuge. You are a husband to the husbandless. You are a father to the fatherless. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, wake up our hearts tonight, God. May our hearts be awoken, be awakened to prayer, God. Father, may you ignite the fire on the inside of us all over again, Lord. May our spirits burn for you, God. May we be a flame for you, Father. May our spirit be stirred by your spirit and may we not shut up about it. May we witness to everyone around us, Father, in the workplace, in the schoolhouse, in the department store, in the unemployment line, in the welfare line. God, I don't care where it is. God, use every place that we are. Use every circumstance we're walking through for your glory, God. God, 
God, the circumstances we're going through, use it for your glory, God. Use it to display your might, your power, your authority, God. We may not like it, God, but help us to see you in it and know that it's for your glory, God. It's not because you're mad at me. It's not because you're trying to punish me. It's for your glory, God. So, Father, I ask that you save sons and save daughters. Deliver sons and daughters from drug addiction. Deliver them from homosexuality, Father. Father, I'm tired of seeing the rainbow being distorted. As a sign it was never created to be. It is still a promise. It is a sign of the promise from Almighty God. And God, I hold on to your promises. And Father, I pray that you'd save the drug addicts, and the homosexuals and the prostitutes. Save the liars and the backbiters and the complainers, God. Do a work in each of our lives tonight, God, regardless of where we are, regardless of who we are. Meet us where we are and do a work in us, God. Lord, I'm inviting you to start with me. Lord, your word tells me that you search my heart and you, you investigate every hidden motive, every secret motive, it says. You search it out. God, I ask you to cut me where I need to be cut. Cleanse me where I need to be cleansed. Set me free where I need to be set free. Heal where I need to be healed. Mend where I need mended, God. Lord, there is kingdom wounds and hurts all around this, this sanctuary tonight. People's been hurt in the kingdom. And Lord, I pray that tonight, right now where they are, that your, your virtue would just begin to flow and begin to heal those wounds. Begin to heal those wounds and just do a, a supernatural work, God. Just begin to heal wounds. And as God begins to heal, you just begin to forgive and let go of those hurts. And the, the people who've hurt you just begin to forgive them. There's freedom and power when you begin to forgive. Those people who's talked about you, They've exploited you. They've said things about you that were untrue. But you just forgive them right now. And in, in the power of Jesus Christ, you just begin to forgive them. Just, just, just cut them loose and set them free. Just let them go. And let God heal you. God can never heal you until you forgive them. Can never be healed completely until you forgive. So just forgive right now. It's people that's used you to get where they wanted to be that it was supposed to be your position, but they usurped authority somehow, they cut you somehow, they undermined you somehow, and they got it. God sees you just hold on, you just forgive. Just release them right now. So Father, we thank you. Can we just begin to thank God right now? Just begin to open your mouth and just begin to thank God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your loving kindness, God. You're sweet, Father. You, 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 you're as sweet as honey, God. Oh, you, you, you give us refreshment like honey, God. Father, may our countenance be enlightened because we've tasted of you tonight, God. We've tasted and seen that you are good. And Father, may we not forget tonight. May we not lose that wow factor of life, of our spouse, and most importantly of you, God. God, may we take time to reflect back on the, the things that we've received from you, the small things and the great things, God. Those little secret prayers that we've prayed in our heart that we never told anyone about, but you heard it, God, and you brought it to pass. I thank you for those little things, and I thank you for the big things, God. I thank you that you meet us right where we are. I thank you that you heard the prayer of a little boy. But all he ever wanted out of life was to find a woman that would just love him. God, you've given that little boy his heart's desire and then so.
And I thank you for all those little boys and all those little girls in this sanctuary watching by internet tonight, God. I thank you that you've been good to us, God. You've given us some of our heart's desires. And some of them are just around the corner. There isn't a single person that's escaped your gaze, God. You know right where everyone is. No one's messed up so bad that your plan's ruined for them. No one's messed up that bad. All we have to do is say, Jesus, forgive me. Father, I thank you that it's that simple, but it's also that critical. Father, we love you tonight. Could you just lift your hands and just love on him a little bit tonight? Just begin to worship him a little. (coughs) Father, we just exalt you tonight. I thank you, Father, that you're still enough. I thank you, Jesus. You are good. You're altogether lovely, Father. There's no one like you. You loved me when I was unlovable. You found me when I didn't want to be found. You ran in when everyone else ran away. Those nights that people have sat on their couch or laid in their bed or sat in their chair weeping because of the pain. What they didn't know at the time, you never left them. You were right there holding them, loving them. When their baby was in the hospital and looked like there was no way, you were the one that stood guard over that baby. Lord, in those times where tragedy visited our homes, it hurt so bad. But God, you were there. And every tear, the word of God tells me, you collected in a bottle. And you recorded each one. So Lord, it may hurt today, but tomorrow you have great joy awaiting. So, Father, I pray that we would just embrace you. We just allow you to do what you desire to do. Allow you to fill us. Allow you to hold us. Allow you to love us. Allow you to set us free. I thank you, Father. You are good. And your mercy endures forever. We thank you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen.